Here we want to talk about uh, particle kinematics and specifically talk about acceleration. And if the equation of motion of a particle uh, is presented by its acceleration. Now here acceleration uh, could be given in different forms. So for example, acceleration uh, could be uh, a function of time. Or it could be described as a function of time. It could be a function of position, as here is the position. It could be a function of velocity. Or probably the, uh, the most straightforward case is when the acceleration is a constant. So it's just not changing at all with time, position, or velocity. So we want to look at each case and see how we go about finding if the acceleration is given how do we find velocity and how do we eventually find position if possible? So I want to start actually with uh, the case where acceleration is a function of time. So a lot of times acceleration of a particle could be changing as a function of time. So in this case actually what we have to do is uh, first define acceleration as we know acceleration is defined as the derivative of velocity, rate of change of velocity. So we really don't have to do much. We could say dv is equal to a dt, and then basically integrate both sides, and then velocity would be the integral of a dt. So, of course, whenever you integrate, you need to uh, have some initial conditions. So by integrating acceleration and uh, using the initial condition, you can then find the constant of integration, then you would have velocity as a function of time. Now, you could also go uh, further and say, okay, we know velocity is the derivative of position with respect to time. So in this case, we could say then ds is equal to vdt by just cross multiplying. And then similarly, here say, if you integrate, say s is equal to the integral of vdt. So, it's very easy to do this. So let me just give you an example on the next page uh, quickly. So let's say, uh, so this is an example. Let's say we are given acceleration of an object to be a simple function of time at 2t, say plus 4. And we are told that at t equals 0, this has, say, 0 velocity, initial velocity is 0. And it starts at position of 1. Now, I'll just use the unit of inches here. Okay, so position is in inches, time is in second. And our objective is to find velocity and position as a function of time. And then you could plug in any time you want into that. So we just said a minute ago that velocity is the integral of acceleration. So if you just take the integral of 2t plus 4, I'm going to make sure we put it in the parentheses, we get then velocity equal to t squared plus 4t plus a constant of integration. I'm going to call it c1. Now this constant, based on the initial condition that at t equals 0, uh, velocity is 0, if you plug in v equals 0 here, and t equals 0 and 0 for the t here, quickly you get c1 equals 0. So then you could say, okay, let's go back and rewrite velocity. Velocity is t squared plus 4t plus 0. So this is your velocity as a function of time. Now to go ahead and find uh, position as a function of time, we just have to integrate velocity. So if we go ahead and integrate t squared plus 4t with respect to time, we get s equal a third of t cube, a third of t cube plus 2t squared plus another constant I call it c2. This time this constant when at t equal 0, s is equal to 1, right? So if you put s equal 1 and put t equal 0, so this is gone, this is gone, so this time c2 becomes 1. So now we rewrite the equation for position and s is going to be a third of t cube plus 2t squared plus a 1 because c2 is a 1 
and this would be our position as a function of time so what we did by integrating acceleration we got velocity we used the initial condition to find the constant of integration and then we again integrated velocity to find position so we started with a linear function of acceleration we ended up getting a quadratic power 2 and then when we integrated a quadratic velocity we got a position which is a cubic so power is 3